Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to uh, the final uh, meeting of the Lansdowne Boundary Committee. Um, tonight, our goal um, for this evening is to uh, review the survey results and information uh, received during the public information session. Uh, there were some public emails as well, and you have a device um, uh, on your uh, tables if you'd like to look those up as well. They're on our website. We're going to break into small groups to review those uh, survey results and kind of evaluate each of the uh, scenarios, uh, options A through D, to come up with a pros and cons list. Uh, we'll then have a group discussion and uh, deliberate and vote uh, to uh, pick one recommendation, uh, to make one recommendation to the board. So we're here at meeting four. Um, the next, um, after this meeting, we'll come up with the one to go to the board. That will be on November 21st um, at um, Greenwood. Then uh, there will be a public hearing the board will put on that will be here at Lansdowne High School on uh, December 6th. And then it will go to the final decision at the board on December 19th. So tonight, uh, you have the information from the um, public information session and all the survey results. And what we're asking you to do is to remember to utilize this feedback um, as an additional tool. Uh, it's not meant to, um, don't focus solely on this report as the basis of your decision. It's not, a, um, it's not meant to be whichever survey or whichever option got the most votes. Um, this is just used um, to inform and for you to evaluate what the public is saying to uh, evaluate the overall objectives and study considerations. So uh, the survey, there was about uh, 30 people attended the public information session. Uh, we had 196 uh, unique respondents on the survey. Of those, 36 uh, were Spanish speaking. Um, they, it, for the comments in your survey uh, report, um, we did have those uh, translated and those um, are direct. Um, you can see um, both, in, uh, um, both sets of information in there. Um, the public was asked about um, their overall opinion towards an option, whether they favored the option and then the reasons why they may favor it or may not favor it. Of those, um, for in favor, so strongly in favor or somewhat in favor, option A, uh, had the most in favor at 77.8% and the least opposed at 14.8%. Options C and D were the most opposed, so that's the total of somewhat opposed and strongly opposed, at 62.3% um, and 68.7% respectively, and the least in favor, 27.8 and 20%. The primary reason for supporting an option was uh, uh, maintaining existing neighborhoods and addressing overcrowding. And for those who opposed um, an option, they were pretty much spread throughout all the different reasons. You'll see in there, um, they're pretty widespread on the reasoning of why they would oppose an option. So what we're gonna ask you to do tonight is to, you're in your two small groups, um, the options A through D, ha D have not been revised at all. They are the same uh, options that went to the public information session, and there are no new options being presented this evening. Uh, we're going to want you to review the survey results and the all of your materials provided to date, your projections, uh, and all the different considerations and objectives that we've outlined for this boundary process. And there's a sheet on each of your um, tables that we're asking you to list the pros and cons of each of the options. So there is one sheet on each table where we're gonna ask you to list the pros and cons. We're gonna ask the principals to ask, act as the facilitators and the recorders for this exercise. Um, we're gonna give you about 30 minutes to do that and then we're gonna come back and talk about, uh, have a discussion on uh, what we're finding. Is there any questions? I'm sorry?
Okay, is everyone ready to uh, report out? Do we have a um, reporter for the yellow group who would like to tell us about the pros and cons of Okay, with option A, it pulls from both communities and there is perceived safety with the bus with the comments from the survey. The option weaknesses were um, the least number of students taken from Baltimore Highlands Elementary School and with the projections um, not always being accurate, the likelihood of overcrowding would occur with Baltimore Highlands in a short amount of time. Option B, the demographics remain relatively stable, which is its strength. And the weakness is that Lansdowne would open at capacity, Baltimore Highlands way below capacity, and it also splits Twin Circle Way. Option C, the capacity is more evenly distributed, maintains a portion of the Hispanic community living in Highland Village, but the weakness is that all the students moving are being pulled from Highland Village and the perception of the community could be that they are trying to just move kids from Highland Village. Option D maintains a larger segment of the Hispanic community in one school, which would be Lansdowne Elementary, but the weakness is that parents are concerned because of transportation issues, the lack of automobiles, and accessibility to the school, and mass transit between Baltimore Highlands and Lansdowne Elementary School is non-existent. It also would open Baltimore Highlands at 98%. Okay. Thank you very much. Blue group? <laughs> okay, so option A, uh, we said strengths were that uh, there was a high level of public support, utilization allows for room for growth in the new building, maintained existing neighborhoods. It was the least change uh, to the number of students who have to move from walkers to bussers, and it maintains the ESOL support um, at Baltimore Highlands. The weakness for option A um, were that the state streets are technically the farthest from the building uh, versus the Baltimore Highlands neighborhoods, um, and parents expressed concerns about what if my child's sick and having to pick them up, parent events, things like that. Uh, and it maintains poverty levels for both schools. Uh, option B, uh, strength was it reduces overcrowding, which all of them do in some effect. Uh, it balances the farms between schools. Option weaknesses, uh, Lansdowne would open at full capacity, which is too high for a new building, and uh, maintains the poverty rate at the school. Option C, the strengths were, uh, maintains the neighborhoods from the survey. It leaves room for growth. And it, um, we had this conversation about equalizing diversity of the region, um, making the three schools a little more similar. Uh, but one of the weaknesses was it does represent a decrease in diversity uh, for Baltimore Highlands, which one of the goals is to maintain or increase diversity. And then option D, strengths were maintains neighborhoods, balances ELL, and again, equalized diversity for the region. And the weaknesses were Again, 98.3% capacity, uh, worry about it being too high for a new school, decreased diversity at Baltimore Highlands, significant change to farms rate for both schools where Baltimore Highlands and Lansdowne would flip, and um, the greatest change to the number of students who are busing, and it breaks up a strong ELL community and staff and resources for the schools. Thank you. Um, so the next um, segment, does anybody have anything else based on what the other group said? Does anybody want to add anything to that conversation or I'm going to make sure? Um, we're going to go in um, and Mike um, Godbertson with uh, Strategic Planning is going to walk us through uh, the vote. Yeah. Okay, so if you remember um, at our last meeting we utilize the active vote systems or use those again. Um, and as a reminder, um, the principals do not vote in this, in this part of it. Um, they participated throughout, provided comments, et cetera. 
Um, as we deliberate, if we need to, between votes, um, principals can still provide input. Um, but as far as the actual voting, that's just done by um, the voting members. Um, the committee members should vote for the option they feel best meets the boundary considerations as we've spent time talking through tonight. Um, and then we'll discuss the results of, e of the vote afterwards to decide if we feel good about the, the number of votes we have for each option to see if we need to do a, another round of voting to um, get to a, a, a consensus. Um, so let's see, what's our next one here? All right, and then, so what we're gonna do with this, we'll get, this will then be the recommendation we give to the board. Um, all right, uh, it's because I didn't show up. Let's see. There we go, awesome. Okay, so um, to do a quick test on this, um, and to do some quality control for us. Um, give us, just to make sure all your devices are working. Um, so as you see up here, um, these will show the devices. Once all these turn yellow, then the voting will stop. Um, so go ahead and choose, um, and we'll just kind of test this out real quick on this one. Um, which meal was your favorite? Um, oops. A is sandwiches, B for pizza, C, lasagna. We've got two left to vote. There we go. All right, so there's our vote. So we have a pretty even split there. Hopefully we can get better consensus when we get to our, our options here. Okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and vote for this, um, and we'll see how the voting shakes out. So this will be your vote for which option you'd like to take to the board. Okay, how about that? So if we, we had text vote. Yes, we had all seven of our voting members vote, all in consensus on option A. Um, so then um, let's just run this real quick to say we did it. We need a re-vote, are we all confident about this? Last, one last person to vote. Vote now, forever hold your peace. No, we, we're, we're, we're missing one. Everyone do it, do your, that's all right. We'll go ahead and call it good anyway. Oh no, we had one that said, said yes. Let's try that again. Okay, so we want to vote it again or we're all good with option A? No, whatever. So we're, we're good. So we've got our uh, <laughs> our consensus on that. Um, um, pull this back up. Hopefully that'll come back up. Um, well, that's still thinking there. There we go. Um, so just as, as quick to wrap up here. Um, our next steps. Um, so this will go recommendation of the board on Tuesday, um, the board hearing on December 6th, and the board decision on December 19th. Um, your attendance is not mandatory at any of those, although you're certainly welcome to attend, um, provide comment at the um, public hearing as like anybody else. Um, and just want to thank you for your hard work and dedication to this process. Um, each of these processes is kind of their own adventure. Um, and I think, especially as we kind of put it in your guys' hands to, to make each of the options, we were, I was impressed with, with the, the variety of options that we came up with, as well as in the, the number of, the variety of the options we took to the public information session that I think really showed um, a broad spectrum of options um, that really gave people a good chance to weigh in on, on um, what they thought was best. And I think ultimately we've, we've got a good, good uh, solution here. Just like to thank everyone again. Um, and uh, just a reminder, the public hearing, that is uh, the opportunity for your community to come out and speak um, if they have any concerns, questions, or would um, positive things about the uh, recommended option. Does anyone have any questions before we um, adjourn?
So um, my name is Dr. Brown. I'm uh, the Chief Accountability Officer for the system. One, uh, let me extend my thanks again to everyone for participating in this process. And I, I know that this can, can drag on. It takes a lot of time and energy. So we're really thankful. At this point, uh, we would not anticipate any additional meetings of this group. However, <laughs> the board could, if they have some objection, because this isn't final until the board votes on it, could ask that the committee reconvene to consider things if there is something that they wish. So while I think it's highly improbable that you will be asked back, there is a small chance that if the board wanted this to be reviewed, they might ask committee members to come back and consider this or consider that. So I, I don't want to make a blanket statement. Uh, but at this point, I, I think you guys, for the most part, can consider yourselves done with this. Again, you're welcome to attend the, the public hearing. Um, I think some of your committee, our community members would be happy to speak with you in those opportunities. Um, welcome to come to the board if you want to when it's presented. Uh, but beyond that, we're very thankful for your time. I do have a yeah. question. Can you um, advertise the 6 p.m. meeting with the community folks? Uh, I, I think it makes sense for the community to be informed and to participate. Uh, it's another opportunity for them to hear about this and voice um, any of their thoughts or concerns in front of the board? Yeah. Yep. Any additional questions? Thank you very much.